بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Who is the person who grows in their deen? What is the sign that a person is higher in their deen? What is the sign that a person is on another level in the deen? Is their closeness and their attachment to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. This is why shaitan will do anything that he will put doubts in the heart of people about hadith. Shaitan will do anything to put doubts in the heart of people about the sunnah, about the hadith. Because the Quran people just interpret it whatever the way they want. But the hadith is very straightforward. This is exactly what it is. This is exactly what you have to do. So, equal to your connection with the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, equal to your following the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam will be your status in the deen. If a person wants to grow in the deen, you grow in your relationship with the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And this is what Allah Himself in the Quran mentions: "لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنَةٌ." Verily, in the Messenger, for you is the most beautiful example. It's very simple. What the Prophet did, just do it. That's as simple as it is. What the Prophet did, you do that. Obviously, there's many other rules that come along with it. You have to ask the scholars, and you have to question the scholars, and you have to know what are the details in some things. But basically, in his moral life, in his way, in the way that he showed us, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, his life was an example for us. The closer we are to his life, the better Muslims we will be. And the more distant we will be from his life, the more distant we will be of Islam. And look at those people that are just weird ideologies. Who are they? They are the people that are most distant from the life of the Prophet, and the thinking of the Prophet, and the lifestyle of the Prophet. And they're just making a deen of their own. Whereas in reality, it's not a it's not a difficult matter. It's very easy. La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. So we ask them, where's Muhammad Rasulullah? Are you denying Muhammad Rasulullah? No, 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 no. Not denying Muhammad Rasulullah. Yeah, but you have, there, there's no relevancy of Muhammad Rasulullah to you. If you don't believe in hadith, where's Muhammad Rasulullah? If you don't believe in sunnah, where's Muhammad Rasulullah? There's no Muhammad Rasulullah then. If you don't believe in hadith, you don't believe in sunnah, you don't believe in the tradition, you don't believe in Bukhari and Muslim and Tirmidhi and Abu Dawood and Ibn Majah, if you don't believe in these things, then your kalima is not complete. Because the kalima is what? La ilaha illallah. And then, Muhammad Rasulullah. I challenge anybody who says, Pursanishko, kalimichis, kalimita bukhan. He'll say, La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. Say, ah, no, you got it wrong. You don't believe in hadith, right? So you have, to, you have to take away Muhammad Rasulullah. If you say, I don't believe in hadith, you have to take away Muhammad Rasulullah. Subtract Muhammad Rasulullah. That's your deen. But La ilaha illallah, the Jews also have it. What, the Jews don't believe in la ilaha illallah? I challenge you. What, the Jews don't believe in la ilaha illallah? They're strict on la ilaha illallah. Very strict. They don't believe in paganism. La ilaha illallah. This category of the Yahud that's mentioned in the Quran, this was a small firqa. This is not the, this is not the orthodox Jews. وَقَالَتِ الْيَهُودُ عُزَيْرٌ ibn Allah. And the Jews, the Yahud say, Uzair is the son of Allah. That was only a group of them. The Orthodox Jews don't believe that Uzair is the son of Allah. The shirk. The Orthodox Jews of today, they say, La ilaha illallah. So I'm asking you, my dear foolish Muslim, my dear foolish Muslim, who says I don't believe in hadith, who says I don't believe in Bukhari, who says I don't believe in the sunnah, you're, what is the meaning of Muhammad Rasulullah? Oh, but... He gave us the Qur'an. So how do you believe in the Qur'an? And the Qur'an, it came from him. The sunnah also came from him. So you should deny the Qur'an as well. Deny the Qur'an. Because the Qur'an didn't fall from the sky. The Qur'an, it just fell from the sky on the earth. Oh, okay, here we go. We have a Qur'an. No, it came to us through Muhammad Wasallam. Muhammad Wasallam narrated it to the Sahaba. Sahaba narrated it to the Tabi'een. He recited it to them. There was no writing. He read it to them. They wrote it on leaves. They wrote it on, the, the, on, the, on the, the, the bones of animals. They collected it like this. It was passed down. The same method was used for hadith. 
So why is it that you believe in Quran, but you don't believe in the Hadith? The same method which the Hadith was preserved, the Quran was preserved. This is a very scary thing. And this is why, my, my dear brothers and sisters, everybody, purpose of this dars every Saturday night is to establish the sunnah and our connection to the Prophet ﷺ and to the hadith and to the sunnah. Because shaitan does not tell you, oh, leave Islam. He's not going to tell you that. It's too hard. It's not that easy to take a Muslim out of Islam. But what do you do? Put doubt in hadith. Oh, I don't know about this hadith. Bukhari? Oh my God. Do you know what is in Bukhari? What's in Bukhari? Do you believe in this? Here. This is, what, this is what's in Bukhari. And then they'll show you something. Nasar dara, nadum dara, h. This is some hadith, like isolated hadith somewhere. There are 10 volume commentaries of the Bukhari. What is he talking about? 10 volumes. Is it just like Gapshap? Is he telling you about the story of his life? I had coffee, I had chai. I... What is the 10 volumes explaining? In the hadith books. Do you know one hadith? Imam Bayhaqi wrote a 12 volume commentary. One hadith. Do you know what is 12 volumes? Let me tell you. This book is 700 pages long. Imam Bayhaqi's book, Shu'abul Iman, is the sharah of a single hadith. And it's 12 volumes. This Shu'abul Iman of Imam Bayhaqi, this is one of the miracles of Islam and the miracles of the words of the Prophet. This one book, Shu'ab al-Iman, is a 12-volume book. It's a commentary of one hadith. It's a commentary of one hadith. Now these people, they look at one hadith without any commentary, and they said, oh, I don't know, this, this is just too confusing. I can't, I can't believe this is, I can't, I can't believe in hadith. How can you believe in hadith? Look at, this is so confusing. This is so doubtful. This is Bukhari. You believe in this? And then they put doubt inside your heart about the hadith. Do you know how much the scholars have discussed this? How much of a background there is? There's a background behind the hadith. Why the Prophet ﷺ said that? Where was he when he said that? Was it day or night when he said that? Was he in a battle? Was he in a situation? Was he old? Was he young? The narrators of hadith have explained everything. The narrators of hadith have explained every detail. Can you imagine that one hadith... It's 12 volumes. You know what the hadith is? I've said this many times. The hadith goes like this. Al-imanu bid'un wa sab'un shu'bah. Fa'a'laha kalimatu la ilaha illallah wa adnaha imatu al-adha'an al-tariq. Rawahu al-Bukhari. This is one hadith. This hadith that I, it took me literally not even a minute to recite has a 12-volume commentary. Don't you figure, Mikini, this guy is like, he's taking this one hadith. Astaghfirullah, look. This is what Bukhari says. Do you believe in that? And then he said, oh yeah, maybe I don't believe in Bukhari. Maybe hadith, I shouldn't believe in it. And this is what people are doing. This is how people are getting confused. If you don't know, ask. If you don't know, just ask. Why are you trying to venture it on your own? It's like for me, opening up a medical book, opening up a calculus book and say, Astaghfirullah, this is a math book. Why does it have letters in it? Math book shouldn't have letters. Math book should have numbers. Astaghfirullah, Saikutu. Do you believe in this? Do you believe in this book, Calculus? Oh, they wanna. How can you even make that iska? That's such an ignorant, that's such an ignorant objection. That shows the ignorant. This is how ignorant are some of the questions that these people are asking. It's like saying, why does the calculus book have letters in it? These are equations, you genius. These letters is part of the math. These symbols are part of the math. But that person doesn't understand because he has no training. And if he were to just go to a person who is a calculus professor, the calculus professor would say, okay, you need to go back to pre-algebra. You need to go back to arithmetic, man. You need to go back to subtraction and division. You don't even know what you're talking about. And this is unfortunately the situation of the ummah today. Us being connected to this dars on Saturday night is our connection to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. My intention is every single one of us, every single one of the people that are sitting here, you should have Riyadh al-Salihin. This is a book that should be in every household. 
Have a connection with the book of Allah, this is your connection to Allah. Have a connection with the hadith of Rasulullah, and this will be your connection to Rasulullah. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And attending this durus, this was one of my intentions, that we reconnect ourselves to, the, to these traditions. Because this is the way that we connect ourselves to the Prophet. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam.